What is going on guys, DBG here and today we are going to be going over all of the new cards, all of these cards right here, Season Rewind, we're going to be ranking them from worst to best and I've tried out all of these cards and this is all just my opinion, if you guys disagree with it, that's perfectly fine, but at the end of the day this is my list, we're going to be ranking these from 30 to number 1 and I don't think there's a couple of controversial ones, but again I've tried out all these cards some for more time than others but i've used every one of these so i have an idea of what they are all about and at number 30 we got sam merrill and um, he's just terrible like he's a shooter with a bad release we can't really play defense and it's kind of slow i get it he's got some off badges his release sucks um i thought i thought sam merrill started the year decent release turns out that no it was just because it was the start of the year sam merrill is terrible He's terrible, and he's coming in at number 30. At number 29, we're going to the opposite conference. We're going to the West, and we're going to use Evita Zubac. Zubac is a big body who cannot shoot or can't really move that well or play the greatest defense. His big thing is in post-game, but post-game doesn't matter this year. Is he unusably bad? Yeah. Yeah. You're expecting me to maybe say, no, he's got 22 badges. He's got 22 base badges, and he's freaking out with this card. No, too much sucks. He's he's terrible. And he's even worse than Jackson Davis, because Jackson Davis, is he's shorter, but at least he can move. Like, they both can't shoot, but at least Jackson Davis has got really nice defense and 90 speed. He's a guy that later on in the year... I was about to say he could be good, but he's got default big, default big was released. This card is never going to be good in my team. So yeah, he's in here at 28. At number 27, we're going to go to the Eastern Conference and we're going to use AJ Green. He is a undersized shooting guard who, is an, who can't play defense whatsoever. Can't even really run. He's only got 20 goal badges. The difference is, is that unlike Sam Merrill, he's actually got a good release. So he's going to go in here at 27. At number 26, we're going to go Tyus Jones. Tyus Jones is just short. Like, he's actually got what kind of everything you need. He's not going to be great. He's 6'1". One. one of his half badges is Rebound Chaser, Speed Booster, and Dimer is other two. He's not the worst player in the world, but he's undersized. So, at 6'1", we got to put him down here at 26. At 25, we're going to put in Emmanuel quickly. He's got a better wingspan, a release on quick, and can kind of dunk. But he does suffer from the same problems as Tyus Jones. Just being very undersized for that point guard position. And there is a guy later... And is smaller, but he's got an ultra long wingspan and, and a, but a much better release than quickly. Um, quickly is not the worst player in the world. I'm just going to put him in here at number 25. At number 24, we are going to be using Dayron Sharp. So Dayron Sharp is like a slightly worse Jackson Davis, except he can shoot a little bit. Release isn't terrible. He doesn't have great acceleration, but he's got great lateral quickness and good speed. And all around is just he play good defense. He'll give you something at that power four position, I guess. But, yeah, he's not the greatest. After him, we got Jalen Johnson. He's a guy that, I, if his release was passable, he'd be good. Because he's a mediocre defender. Like, he's an all-around mid-machine. I like an upper end. I the all-around mid-machine. Like, the all-around mid-machine are the guys that have 80-plus in everything, but not, like, but 90-plus in nothing. And he's like on the higher end of the 80 plus and everything and 90 plus and nothing, guys. His badges are really good. His release is unusable. And I'm sorry, I can't type up a guy with an unusable release. Then we're going to our West for Max Christie. Max Christie is coming in here at number 22. He's a 6 5 point guard with a pretty decent release. The problem is his stats aren't very good. His attributes just aren't good. He doesn't do anything well at a particularly high rate, he's not good at anything. Um, his jumper is really nice. You know, he doesn't have the best shooting badges. His defense is mediocre. Not the greatest dunker. He doesn't do anything well. He's not terrible. He doesn't do anything badly, but he doesn't do anything well either. So that's why he's in here at 22. At 21, we're on to a, uh, a diamond, and it's Boyan Bogdanovich. Um, he shoots, and that's it. No defensive badges. Mediocre defensive stats, but he is a 6-7 guy who can't play the, sh play the two and shoots and that is all which is why we have a diamond at number 21 and number 20 now this is a controversial one and is there should he be two or three spots higher probably it's Devin Vassell Devin Vassell's release is horrible 
It's horrible. Like, he's got a 92 three ball, but his release is horrible. His defense is nice. Don't get me wrong. He's got the badges as well. He's a 6'5 guy who can't play the point guard. In my opinion, is not a very good shooter and is just a, a DNO3 player. I can't... I can't put him over a lot of guys. I would never use him. And he's not even fun. Because the next up is a guy that's probably not going to be as effective as him, but he's fun. It's Terry Rozier. Terry Rozier is just fun. He's got a long wingspan, which puts him ahead of the likes of Emmanuel quickly. 90 driving dunk, 96 three ball, with an unbelievably good release. 94 speed, 89 lateral, and 11 huffs. 11 huffs are like speed booster, limitless range, catch and shoot. He's got, he has, he's got agent threes as well. Defensively, is he going to do anything? Hell no. Hell no, he's not going to play defense at all. But I can't put the single most fun player to use. The most fun player to use in this entire set. I cannot put him outside my top 20. So he's in here at 19. At 18, we got Jordan Clarkson. If Jordan Clarkson was 6'5", this would be a different conversation. He's got a good release. Actually, pretty good stats. Like, his defense leaves a bit to be desired. If he was 6'5", we would be talking about a potential top 13, 12, 13 player. Maybe top 10. But again, he's another undersized player who gets half rebound chaser as one of his Hall of Fames. Isn't going to play much defense. He has a really, really small player build, like as in skinny player build, which means that if he was 6'5", he would play like he's 6'4", maybe 6'3". Um, the problem is a 6'3", he plays like he's a 6', he's six foot tall and just can't play defense. So Clarkson is great. He's offensively, he's coming in here at 80. At number 17, we got Trey Murphy. Um, he is, again, a decent shooter, like not the greatest defender. Good speed to ball and acceleration, I guess. Decent lateral. But for me, like, he's just the worst version of the um, Jarris Walker card that came out a few days ago. So, he's fine. Trey Murphy's fine, which is why he's near the middle at 17. At 16, we got Anthony Simons. Simons has got a good dribble style, a good release, a great dunk. He's got the curry slide, plays no defense. Um, but he's also 6'3", but he's got a longer wingspan and a bigger player build than a Clarkson or a Rozier. So he's got agent three. He obviously comes with gold range. And on the defensive end, like you're not really getting much. You're getting fast feet and ankle braces, I guess. You're not getting clamps, but you're going to have to hide him. He's still pretty nice, though. So 16, I think, is fair for him. At number 15, we're using Yusuf Nurkic, a really nice player. Like, Yusuf Nurkic's release is good. Um, if his speed was in the 80s, everyone would be hyping him up. He's a great rebounder. He's a good shot blocker. Big player build. Good lateral quickness. Back then, pusher, masher, bulldozer. 28 golds. Like, I would have rather have seen like gold anchor or half anchor, half rebound chaser. Like I'd rather see them as the halves, but he's he's actually really good. Like, this is where we're getting into our guys that I'll say. Like, legitimately good. He's in here at 15. At 14, we got one beside him. We got Dante Exum. Exum is an all-out defensive guard. That's what he does. He'll hit the wide open three ball. I actually really like Dante Exum's release off the catch this year. Um, he's going to dunk it, but he has basic dribble style, so he can't really move too well. But the thing is, is that his defense is really good. He is a really nice cone point guard. Like, if you can put a shooter beside him, I'm telling you guys, you've got a... A really, really nice defensive point guard and just a guy that will play play his role. He'll play a role and he'll do play a role pretty damn well. So Dante Exum is in here now, lads, at, uh, at number 14. At number 13, we're going to go the opposite. So he's all defense. Kobe White is flat out offense. They're both 6'5 as well. Kobe White with a 93 three ball, good driving dunk, really nice handle, a release on quick, and a really good release. Defense, not very good, but he's big. You can hide him on a cone two guard. Really good speed. Good enough lateral quickness. And he's got agent three, catch and shoot, limitless range with a super nice release. Just the way he moves is really good. And he is going to be one of the better offensive point guards in his entire game. I would say he's a top 10 offensive point guard in the game. He just offers nothing on defense, which probably puts him outside the top 10 overall. Definitely puts him outside the top 10 overall. And then at number 12, we've got just like... For me, a better version of Trey Murphy, Keegan Murray. Really nice release. Um, overall, good stats. Big player build. Problem is base or MD dribble style. 
He's got 11 half stoke and 35 gold. So he's going to play well on both ends of the floor. Uh, he's got things like fast feet, relay pass here on silver. Got right stick ripper. So he's going to be a really good defender. He's going to be a nice catch and shoot player as well. And for that, he's coming in here at number 12. And number 11 is probably the best budget point guard in the entire game, Case and Wallace. Case and Wallace has got a really nice dribble style, a really nice release, a good dunk. He's a superb defender. Uh, got gold right stick ripper, got elite speed speed ball acceleration, nice lateral quickness. His player build is big because he's got a long wingspan. And I was, I'm so pleasantly surprised in this guy. I think not quite a top 10 player today, but like... The fact he's good enough having used like used them that I decided to make a gameplay video on him. And there are guys in the top 10 that I haven't made gameplay videos on. Uh, is there any, how many guys in the top 10 have I not? Two in the top 10 I think I've not made videos on. But um, I chose to make one on Casey Wallace. And number 10 we got Shangoon. Shangoon's fine. Like Shangoon's got a good jump shot. He's a good enough defender. He's a uh, big, big body. He's 6'11". He's got 87 speed, 82 lateral, which is more than good enough. 11 hoffs, including like um, relay. Was that relay passer? I'd love to have a whole team of hoff relay passer. Like that would definitely be a good thing to have. He doesn't have relay passer though, but he isn't a bad defender. He's got anchor. He's going to shoot the ball pretty well. He's going to rebound pretty well. He's, he's a good player. And number nine. Now this is the controversial one. Desmond Bain. Desmond Bain at number nine. So he's 6'5. He's got T Rex arms, though. His three ball is really nice. His dunk's pretty decent. I don't like his defense. Um, I just feel like he's small. And he's actually got some really nice badges. Like he's got 16 halves, including um like does he have any defense? Yeah, he's got half clamps. He's got half glove as well. So it's not like he's a bad defender. He's actually, in fact, a really good defender. Obviously, he got a uh, gold right stick ripper and 94 feet and fast feet as well. I just think he's a little bit small. His dribble style is great. And I just... That ruby card, I loved him on day one. And then as time went on, I just stopped liking that release. And as time went goes on, I know I'm going to start hating this Desmond Bain release. I just think that release is a little bit too slow. And he's one of those guys that I just got frustrated using. I'm not the biggest Desmond Bain fan. And another guy that I just get really frustrated using in at number eight is Jalen Brown. His release is just too slow. Jalen Brown, I said it yesterday, unless he gets that release on quick, you just can't. I just can't justify it. Like his stats are perfect. This should be the best two guard in the game. As far as shooting guards go, um, he might not be. Look, he's probably better than the guy one and three spots ahead of him. But he's not enough better that I can justify being like, he's definitely better. Because he just he just doesn't shoot. Like for me, jump shot is the most, my most important thing in a player is that like, I like the jump shot. Because of the way that I play the game, if I don't like a guy's jump shot, they're going to struggle for me. Is he great on defense? Yes, he is. He's great, great, great on defense. And that's just not enough to crack my top eight. Because we're going to go for Caleb Houston. Who... Like, Fader Universe on the line, if you ask me who I would take, Caleb Houston or Jalen Brown in my team, it depends on the game. I would probably take Caleb Houston. He's got a better jump shot, he's taller, he's longer. That's, it is what it is. And defensively, he's really good as well. He's 6'8", curry slide, decent speed, elite release, Devin Booker base. He's got the basic fade, which I actually don't mind. He's also got 27 goal badges, including limitless range. Clamps, so he's... For me, he's like a he's as good as J James Jones, maybe even better than James Jones. That's how highly I rate Caleb Houston. A fantastic, fantastic card. At number six, we're gonna go for Miles Turner. Um, if Miles Turner was 21k, we would be looking at like one of the best cheap centers in the game. The problem is they made him 42k, whereas they made some of the other Amethyst 21k, which is not ideal. Like 86 three balls at least. Good driving dunk. He's at 94 block. He's also got 90 interior, 80 speed, 84 lateral, and a superb release. To anchor pose lockdown and a movable enforcer. He's got goal catch and shoot, goal corner specialist, golden acceptor. Like you are looking at like a poor man's 80. You're looking at a poor man's bam at a bio. Like that's what you're looking at here with Miles Turner. And you're looking at easily a uh, top five center is probably not, not right anymore because we have two top five centers in Embiid and Cat both added into the game today. So he's probably not in that top five, but 
he's in that next tier. Like, as far as the tiers go, you've got, like, your D-Robs, your Wembys. And then I would say my next tier of centers is your Cats, your, um, your Cat and Bead and Hakeem. And then you're probably your next tier of centers is like your Miles Turners, your Dikembe's, your Aitons. Um, but he is in and around that level of center, which is elite. And number five is my starting shooting guard, uh, Julian Strader. You will, you've obviously, if you haven't seen the gameplay, <laughs> this guy's a joke. This guy's a joke. I greened 35, like not in the gameplay, but I was messing around. I greened 35 threes in a row at him on half. And I basically was cooking a, a guy. I was hitting yellows. I was hitting everything. This is the best shooter in my team, period. Um, he's also a really nice defender for some reason. He's got some length. Um, an elite, elite shooter. Good defender. He has no flaws. Like, I initially thought Caleb Houston was going to be, like, the best budget player today. But, like, <laughs> this is my team. He's my shooting guard. Is he as good as Kobe? Of course not. But I like the way, if you guys don't know me, the way I play, I like to run two equal lineups. So a lot of the time I run um, a bench lineup or like my bench lineup as my starters because I normally like run people close in the first quarter. And then I bring in my bench lineup and try blitz them in the second quarter and then just split the second half minutes. So I play my starters and bench even minutes, but I like to play my starters against my best five against their bench. So he isn't in my best five, but he's my backup shooting guard. He's my backup shooting guard. That is what I, uh, how highly I rate this card. He just doesn't miss. Trust me on that. If you're struggling shooting with guys, just get Julian Strader. Put him in your team. Suck up your pride. Get rid of your pink diamond that you can't shoot with. Put him in your team and you'll never miss again. Um, and number four is Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid is a huge body, good shooter and just again a fantastic fantastic player his uh, ball handles a little bit lacking but he's got nice speed he's got good lateral big player build as well as 16 hoffs including like anchor catch and shoot so he's gonna be that really really good defender big body doesn't really have much many flaws if you can get that release down he has no flaws and number three i think is just slightly better and beat it's cat Cat is the best for, I don't know why 2K did it, but Cat's, in my opinion, the best defensive um, power forward in the game. You can use him as a center as well. Um, and he's unbelievable at center. The only reason I wouldn't use him as center is I prefer Dave Robinson and I prefer Wemby. Um, otherwise, it's the only reason I play him a power forward. I think you can make the argument he's the best power forward in the game. Um, you can make the argument he's chat level. You can make the argument he's AD level. His release is quick. It's not... Um, the easiest to time but it's quick enough that if you can time it you're going to get it off great defensive stats great speed and cat is ridiculous the fact there's two players higher than them is crazy and uh, one of those is dante divincenzo as you saw my starting point guard um in my opinion the number one point guard in the game i know a lot of people are going to go luca for me dante divincenzo the way i use luca is i use luca for as a defensive shooting point guard He's a way better release than Luka. He plays defense at a very similar rate, if not a better rate to Luka Doncic. He's also got one of those 80 driving dunks, which is my ideal rating. 80 driving dunk, which is why I like Luka and I like Jalen Suggs, is because you've got that 80 driving dunk and a good um, good animations, don't get blocked, 95 lateral. And look, if you look at the badge, he's got catch and shoot, clamps, glove, interceptor, fast feet, rise to gripper, 94 feet all the defensive ones he's also got gold range in agent threes with an elite release and dante divincenzo in my opinion is the best point guard in the game um, but i think bam is the number one card that came out today i think ironically bam is not in my team and dante divincenzo starts point guard but the bam not being in my team is something that is like subject to change like for my best team i've been running cat i run ad sometimes and there is potential that I change. There is no guarantee that um, I play with these two guys as my power forwards. If I, if one of them is having a bad game, Bam Adebayo is next to come in over to Kwame Brown. Um, and then like at the same time, like if Dante DiVincenzo is having a bad game, I got Rex Chapman to come in. I got Luka Doncic to come in. I got Penny Hardaway, Jalen Suggs, 
um, Luka Doncic, or not Luka Doncic, Devin Booker just come waiting to come into my team to get their spot. So I think Bam just all around is the better card. I think he's going to stand the test of time better. I think that Bam, he's got one of the best release in the game. He's got one of the best release in the game. And other than his three ball every stat that matters, very power forward to above 90. 93 lateral as well. Nice player build. He's got anchor clamps. He's got um, a movable enforcer as well. You got to put catch and shoot on him. And if he ever comes into my team, he will get it. He's got gold, right stick ripper. And just an unbelievable card. So anyway, that is the video. I'd say the ones that are shocking you guys most are DiVincenzo and Schroeder's placing. But again, this is my list. There's some cards that I'm going to like a lot more than you guys. And there's some cards that you guys are going to like a lot more than me. And that's fine.